I've previously created videos on how I emulate classic macOS on my MacBook Air, but I've never done a video guide for Windows, so I thought for Marchintosh I'd do one. I'll try and explain as I'm going along what you'll need and why you need it. So let's get started, right after this message from PCBWay. Our good friends over at PCBWay have kindly sponsored this video. PCBWay offers a variety of services from PCB production and assembly to 3D printing in various materials, injection moulded plastics and even sheet metal fabrication. They offer a very professional and high quality service for extremely reasonable prices. Check out a link for their website in the description below. Firstly we need to download Basilisk 2, which is an application which will simulate a Macintosh computer. If you google Basilisk 2 Immaculation, the kind folks over there have compiled a version which you can download. Links to all the downloads will be in the description below. Unlike in my Basilisk 2 on Mac video, you won't need to download the Basilisk 2 GUI application, which is used for configuring your virtual Mac as it is included with the main Basilisk download. We now need a ROM. This contains boot information as well as required runtime routines that are essential for getting a Mac to run. The easiest place to get a good known ROM is to google redundant robot sheep shaver and then on this page download the performer ROM. We'll next need an operating system installer CD as we'll need to install some system software inside the virtual machine. There are several websites to get CD images known as ISOs but my preferred website is winworldpc.com. But you could find one elsewhere, such as the fantastic MacintoshGarden.org. Basilisk 2 will work with up to macOS 8.1, which was the last supported 68k operating system. This step is entirely optional, as you can create disk images in Basilisk itself, but the disk jockey application created by fellow retro enthusiast One Geek Army is worth a mention. Not only can you create disk images used for an emulator, but you can create disk images for use in a good many other platforms. It's a great utility to have in one's toolbox. Once we have all the files downloaded we can set about getting everything in the right place. I already have a temp folder on my computer's hard drive so I'm going to create a folder called Basilisk in there. Once created we can then extract the contents of the Basilisk zip that we downloaded from the Immaculation website into it. Then after extracting that zip file we can extract the ROM file and place it in the same folder. Optionally we can rename it to macOS ROM but this step can be skipped as we're going to tell Basilisk where the ROM is and what the file name is later. I've used Windows since Windows 95 so I'm very familiar with it but that being said macOS is a bit more elegant in extracting and moving files around. We'll next extract disk jockey from its zip file and place that on the desktop. This will be used to create a hard disk file that will be used with our emulator. It's essentially a hard disk in software and because it's a file it means that we don't need to worry about all that scary disk partitioning nonsense. And if we need to get rid of it you simply delete it. Now Windows 11 has had built in 7-zip decompression for a little while now but it's the slowest piece of software I've used in decades and it takes a horrendous amount of time to decompress even the simplest of files. So instead what I use is a portable copy of 7-zip. Portable means that there's no installer as I'm too impatient to wait to install it before I want to use it. And it also means I can pop this application on a memory stick and move it to another computer and not have to worry about installing it there either. A benefit of a portable app is if you're using a corporately locked down machine these can be used to bypass the admin rights requirements for software installation. Ok the next thing we need to do is tell Windows that it's ok to run the disk jockey application as the pesky smart screen is meddling. Simply right click on the disk jockey application and choose properties. From there tick the unblock option and click ok. The next hurdle you may come across is if you do not have the .NET 6 framework installed on your machine. You'll get an error message but if you click yes you'll be taken directly to a downloads page and after downloading and installing, Disk Jockey should open right up. In the drop down menu right in the centre of the application where it says use with, change this to basilisk slash sheep shaver, then specify the size of the image you wish to create. Click in the disk image name field and choose the name of your liking for the file. Next click on the folder icon next to save in and pop it in the basilisk folder you created. 
Finally, click the purple Create the Image button and after a couple of seconds, you'll have a fresh new disk image. We need to download a macOS boot floppy. In my previous video on Basilisk for macOS, this was easier as there was a boot image on the redundant robot website, which unfortunately is no longer available. Pesky Windows Smart Screen is preventing us from launching the Basilisk 2 GUI application, so to get around this, we right click on the file and choose Properties. Tick the Unblock option and click OK. Now when we double click the icon, it should launch and we should be able to see the Basilisk 2 GUI in action. On the first tab, Volumes, click the Add button. This is where we specify the disk image that we're going to use to boot the virtual machine from. Basilisk 2 will boot these disks in order, so choose the boot floppy first, then either the installer ISO or the hard disk image. The order in which you choose these isn't so important. We can next click Enable My Computer icon on your Mac desktop, which will easily enable us to get files to and from your virtual Mac. Click on the graphics slash sound tab and then we can set the window refresh rate and horizontal and vertical resolutions as you like them. Usually I specify the window refresh rate to 30Hz as I found that this is a reasonable compromise between smoothness and performance. I also prefer my window size to be 800 by 600 so make these changes too. Nothing needs to be changed on the keyboard slash mouse tab or the ports tab. But on the system tab, this is where we can specify the amount of RAM, which I suggest you change to something higher than the default 8 megabytes. We can change the max model ID to Quadra 900 and then CPU type to 68040. Click the browse button next to the ROM file and find the performer ROM that we downloaded from the redundant robot website. And that's it as far as config goes. To boot the machine, click start. No, not the Windows start button, the start button in the bottom left hand corner of the window. You should now see a new window pop up, as well as hear the Mac startup chime. Click OK when you see the system software warning, and then after a few moments, you should be asked to initialize the disk we've created in Disk Jockey. I call mine Macintosh HD and then click the initialize button. After a couple more moments, you should be taken to the desktop. From here, we can open the installer CD and start the setup to install a fresh copy of macOS system software on your virtual Mac. Once the installation has finished, shut the machine down via the special menu. Open up the Basilisk GUI again and remove the boot floppy and installer image. Click, click Start to save your settings and boot the virtual machine. I recommend cancelling the setup wizard that launches on first boot as I found it hangs my machine. You can now go ahead and customise your installation and install your own software. Well, that's the end of it. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.